In this video, we're going to be learning a few things about the slope of a line. Um, first, we're going to go over how to find the slope of a line visually, um, as well as how to find it using a formula. We're also going to learn how to draw a line if we know its slope. And the last thing we'll go over is some special cases of slopes when we deal with vertical and horizontal lines. So let's go ahead and get started with the easiest part finding the slope if you are visually looking at the line. So to find the slope of something, it is known as the rise over the run. Rise over run. So it's typically written as a fraction, although sometimes it can be also be a whole number. So what do we mean by rise over run? Well, to move from one point to the next, you can see we're moving here from negative two, one, negative one, two, four, three we're rising up a certain number of points and we're running to the right. So to help you remember that, just think of like the sunrise. So you have the sun rises up and down, and then when you're running, you would run left or right. So in this example, we can see that the rise is four and the run is six. By the way, if um, the rise is going down, then it would actually be negative. But the run, the run would always be positive. So four over six, if we think of it as a fraction, we can also simplify it by dividing both of them by two. So the simplified version of the slope of this line would be two thirds. Okay, let's go ahead and try some more examples over here. Okay, so starting with the line AB, the line segment AB, to find the rise, I notice that we're starting here and we're finishing at point B. So the rise, it looks like we're moving up two, and then we're running one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right. So the run would be seven. So that means our slope, which is rise over run, would be two over seven. Okay, next one is the line segment CD. Now for this, it's, it's always easier to start from the left and move to the right. So I'm actually going to go from D to C. We are rising 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and running 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means our slope in that case would be 5 over 4. Okay, now for the last one, the line segment from E to F. Okay, so from here to here. Now, this is an example of where the rise is gonna be negative because it's actually going down. One, two, three, four, five. So it's negative five. And our run is one, two, three. So in that case, our slope is negative five thirds. Okay, now one type of problem you might encounter is where you're given the slope of a line and you have to draw it on a Cartesian plane. So this is an example of that. So the question says to draw a line segment that goes through the point to one and has a slope of one half. So to answer a problem like this, we're gonna start by actually labeling the point that we're given, which is in this case, two, one. So two, one would be located right there. Now, the next step is to use the slope to help you find the other points. Well, a slope of one half means a rise of one and a run of two. And I know that because the formula for a slope is rise over run. So in this case, the rise is one and the run is two. So how does that help us create this um, line? Well, look, we already know this point exists on the graph. Now we just have to imagine what happens if we rise one and run two. Let's think about that. We rise one and run two. That takes us to here. Now we do it again. Rise one, run two. You start to notice a pattern here. Rise one, run two. Rise one, run two. And we could even go in the other direction, except this time we go down one and left two. Down one and left two. So if we're doing this properly, if we grab a ruler, we'll see that this does form a straight line. Just like that. Add some arrows at the end, and we are done. Okay, so those are some types of problems where um, we're visually looking at the slope of a line. Now, what if we don't have that advantage? 
What if we're given a question like this, where it's asking us to find the slope of a line that passes through the points negative 3, negative 7, and 1, 2. This time we, don't, we can't visually look at the graph. So in this case, what we do is we utilize something called the slope formula. And how that works is that it's the change in y over the change in x. Now, you might be wondering what the heck is what are these triangles for? Well, the triangle is actually um, a Greek symbol. It's pronounced delta, if you're curious. And it actually uh, represents the change. It means to change something. At any rate, to figure out a question like this, our first step is to choose and write down your x1, y1 values and your x2, y2 values. Now, if you're wondering what the heck does that mean, well, x1, y1 just represents one of the two points that we're given. x2, y2 represents the second point. We call them x1 and y1, well, because it's the x-coordinate of the point and the y-coordinate or the y-value. Uh, <clears throat> so, for example, let's, let's call this one our x1, y1. So, in that case, our x value is negative 3. Our y value is negative 7. And then uh, the point 1, 2, that's going to represent our x2, y2 point. So x2 has a value of 1 in that case, and y2 has a value of 2. All right, now for the last step, we're going to use the formula. So um, let's write it down here. So it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, so we know that x2 has a value, oh sorry, y2 has a value of 2. We just wrote that down over here. And y1 has a value of negative 7. So it's actually going to be 2 minus negative 7 when we write it out here. And that's going to be over x2. Now x2 has a value of 1. And we're going to be subtracting x1, which is a value of negative 3. So I'm going to put in brackets like this. Okay, so for the last thing we do here, we're going to solve our numerator and denominator and simplify if we can. So you might hopefully remember what happens when we subtract a negative number. That actually means we're going to be adding. So 2 minus negative 7 is actually 2 plus 7. That gets us an answer of 9. And our denominator, we've got 1 minus negative 3. Same thing happens, we're actually going to be adding 1 plus 3 to get 4. And 9 over 4 is our answer. We actually can't simplify that fraction, so that is our slope, and we are finished. Now the one last thing we're going to cover in this video is vertical and horizontal lines, because they're a little unique. And I'm actually going to start by moving straight down to the examples here. It says on the grid below, draw the lines x equals 3, and y equals negative 2. So let's think about what would happen in that case. First, let's do x equals 3. So that means we're going to go along the x-axis and look for where it's equal to 3, and that would be right here. And what we need to do next is draw more points with, that have an x value of 3. What do I mean by that? Well, check this out. All of these points along this line have an x value of 3. The only thing that's changing is the y value, and that's okay. All we're doing is trying to find all the points that have an x value of 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect these guys, add some arrows at the end, and that's our line x equals 3. So let's go ahead and label it. So we can see that this forms a vertical line. So over here, we can jot down that the line x equals 3 is vertical, and that means the slope is actually undefined. Let me explain what, why that's the case. We know the slope is rise over run, right? Now, but the run here, it's from, from one point to the next, it's not running to the right or left. That means the run is zero. And we can't divide by zero. That's why we call it undefined. And that's explained in the notes up here. A vertical line has an undefined slope, and that's because we can't divide by 0. Okay, next let's look at the line y equals negative 2. So now we're going to be drawing points everywhere along this line, because all of these points have an x value, or sorry, a y value of negative 2. 
So it's going to form a horizontal line that goes through the y-axis at negative 2. So we're going to write down that this forms a horizontal line. And in this case, the slope is 0. Why is the slope 0? Well, that's because in this case, the rise is 0. Because we're mo moving from one point to the next, we're not moving up or down. Therefore, the rise is 0. So when we divide 0 by 1, for example, we would get an answer or a slope of 0. So that's explained up here. Horizontal line has a slope of 0, and 0 divided by anything would be equal to 0. All right, I think that just about covers everything in this lesson. Thanks for watching.